It's a new day, baby. Yeah, you ready for some gains? So, I've had to change my training for today. If you can't really see, so I've got like octop an octopus attacked me. Uh, <laughs> so, one, I've, I've cut my shoulder, and that was actually because of the squirrel. Um, so the other day I was cycling in the park, a squirrel decided to dive bomb me, I break to, to save the squirrel because I'm a decent citizen, yeah, uh, and I skidded into the ground and even though I landed on this side, this side is messed up, so my left, my right knee has issues and my right shoulder is a bit tweaky. So I don't want to push shoulders too much because everything overhead is saying ouchies. So I'm doing a bit of a warm up to, to well, to help the, the shoulder get the blood flowing. And then I'll see what I do after that, depending on how it's feeling. So we are starting with a bit of stability, strength, conditioning kind of movements to help with the shoulder, to help with activating every single element of it whilst not going too heavy. Um, so one of my favorite ways to warm up shoulders, get two relatively light plates and we're going to just do some rotations, okay? So you want to keep your elbows locked in position and just warm up that shoulder. It's one of those exercises that I find really helps to isolate the shoulder. You don't want to do it like this, okay? The moment you do this, you're engaging your trap. So you want your chest back, okay? Don't hunch. Chest back, scapula retracted, shoulder blades retracted, and just pivot through the elbow up and down. You can go really, really light from this. You don't need to go heavy. This is about blood flow. You can even use elastic bands for this. So there's no reason you can't just do that it's at home. If you've got shoulder issues, salt shoulder impingements, this is just a great way to get blood flowing, okay? So you wanna do between 15 and 20 reps, so it's really high reps, just getting the blood into the shoulders, okay? And then we're gonna rotate to this one, okay? Again, don't hunch, you wanna keep everything down, relax, chest out, and a nice prim and proper form. <laughs> and like, like I said the other day, you wanna feel like, you know, like you've got a carrot up your ass. You're really like, really nice and posh in posture. Chest out, and you're just really keeping your scapula attracted like a ballerina, and really just rotate through the shoulders. And the blood will fill your shoulder. And it's just like one of those, like, you don't need to go light to really start to engage that, the shoulder. And the thing about blood flow is it heals. And that's why a lot of athletes do zone two. Now, zone two, if you don't know, is when you do cardio at a pace that you can still talk. So you're not pushing yourself, you're not out of breath. It's a steady enough pace that it gets your heart rate up. I, I don't know offhand what the heart rates are. Um, and obviously it depends on your age because the older you are, the, the lower the heart rate becomes. So zone two is at a pace that you can still walk, um, talk and you're not completely out of breath, and it just helps with blood flow. And the more you get blood into the muscle, the more it helps to recover. And that's why you, um, a lot of the time, if you've got an injury, you do blood flow restriction training. And that's when you see, you know, people who have like a band above their, their bicep. And that what that does is it you do like high volume exercise, and then you release the band, and it fills with the lactic acid and that lactic acid and that blood flow helps to heal the muscle. So zone two is really important. High reps are important for recovery of the muscle. And so if you're like really tight in a muscle or you're really struggling to recover, what you can do is actually train that muscle again, but really high reps, like 20, 30, 40 reps, just getting blood flow into that muscle and that blood flow will help with your recovery. So I'm also going to be doing upside down kettlebells. It's a nice stability exercise, okay? And this will really help to stabilize the muscle. And just, again, help with that blood flow, okay? 
It's a hard exercise. I might have gone too heavy with the kettlebell. And this will just, again, help with stabilizing that muscle and getting blood into it. Okay. We want to do it nice and slow and controlled. Again, keep your chest out, control it. Like, I know the one person, when it comes to blood flow restriction, the one natural athlete, um, Lane Norton, I think his name is, and leading up to a bodybuilding show when you're really, really depleted and you're not really feeling good, he would do blood flow restriction training for all his muscle groups because it allowed him to still get adequate muscle, blood into the muscle whilst not having any to really push it. So you could keep that fullness of the muscle bellies without having to go super heavy. And that's the one nice thing about blood flow restriction training is that you don't go super heavy. Okay, you shouldn't because <laughs> that's when you're, you're asking for trouble. Okay? I was trying to see. Mm. Ooh. This, inju- this may be my injured shoulder, but <laughs> my left is really struggling more than my right. Interestingly enough, this is why we do right. instability exercises. Because uh, uh, it helps to pinpoint where you've got issues and where you're weaker. Ooh. Right. So the goal is roughly 10 reps on each shoulder for the kettlebell upside out kettlebell press. And I'm going to do three rounds. So I'm going to ro- do the rotations with the plates this way. Okay. And then this way, 15 to 20 reps of each one. Okay. And then eight to 10 reps of the head of the ball press. So that's how I'm going to start to warm up and I'm going to see how my shoulder feels and depending on how it feels depends on what I will do next. But you just got to, sometimes you've got to adjust your training according to how your body's feeling, what's happened, what's going on and never it, and it doesn't mean you're not progressing because it's all about consistency. It's about showing up. Progress and making progress and seeing results is about consistency. Yeah. It's about showing up. It's not necessarily about every single day being like, yeah, I'm ready to fucking smash the gym. Because not every single day will be a smasher of a freaking workout. You know, not every single day will be like, motherfucker, I'm beast mode. You know, some days are going to be like, okay. I'm here. Hi. I feel like poo. Or in, in today's case, it's like, okay, my shoulder's injured and I'm not able to go super heavy. It's sore. I'm achy, but I'm, I'm here. Guess what? I'm here. And that's the most important thing. It's about showing up. You know, like show up, put in the work. However you're feeling for that day, show up and Give your best for that day. There is only ever one reason not to show up, okay? Okay, there are a few. (laughs) One, sleep. If you have not slept at all, it's like you're trying to make progress, but your body hasn't healed. And I actually saw something really, really fascinating about sleep. So I am 100% about sleep. Okay, sleep is the key to everything. It's performance. It's the key to performance. It's the key to strength. It's the key to gains. It's the key to the mindset. It's the key to everything, okay? And what happens in this day and age is as you go throughout the day, you've got so many choices, okay? And those choices stimulate the brain, okay? And they overstimulate the brain. And then suddenly you're exhausted by the afternoon because you've had to make so many choices, okay? And then the second thing that we tend to do is we live on caffeine, okay? And the caffeine actually stops the receptors, the adenine, ad- I think it's adenine, adazine, adaz- one of those receptors that tell you you're tired, okay? So now you're taking caffeine and you're taking caffeine and you're taking caffeine and you're blocking your receptors from telling you you're actually tired. So you're overstimulated, you're getting screen time, you're not 
dialing down 4C, okay? And then you, you can't sleep properly. And then you wake up, you haven't gotten growth hormone, you haven't allowed your body, your mind to get rid of all the adenosine and all the things stimulating your brain. So you, you're still clogged in the morning, the next morning, okay? So it's really important to identify if you've slept correctly, okay? And I'll do an entire video about how to prepare for sleep, how to sleep optimally, and that sort of thing. But if you have slept like complete crap, okay, I'm talking like very little sleep, then there is that reason to not train because you may be doing more harm than good because your body actually really needs sleep. It needs to recover. It for strength, for gains, for everything, okay? Recovery is number one when it comes to being optimal in the gym. And if you have slept like complete crap, that is a reason not to train, okay? I don't mean, okay, I slept for seven hours instead of 10 hours, so I'm not gonna go train. No, I'm talking about like, if you slept like complete crap, then maybe that is a potential not to train, okay? Second reason is obviously if you're injured or you're sick. Please, do not show up at the gym when you're like full with the flu or something like that. You're sniffing and coughing and coughing on things and you're spreading bugs everywhere. Do not show up. And more importantly, don't show up at the gym because then it's going to aggravate your heart. And the last thing you want to do is to injure your heart because you're at the gym when you should be resting. Okay? So those are the reasons not to train. And you need to be honest with yourself. Okay, if you you feel like every single cell of your body is aching and sore and you're just like, yeah, I just don't want to show up, then go and do zone two. Go for a walk. That may be what your body needs. Listen to your body, but also be honest with yourself and be like, don't be like, yeah, I just don't feel like training, so I'm not going to. No, because then you are not taking that step towards your goals. And it's about little steps every single day to get towards your goals. One step at a time, baby. That's what we want. Okay, so my shoulders are feeling good. I feel like that blood flow, getting them a little bit loosey-goosey has helped. So I am going to go and do some um, shoulder press. So I am theorizing and obviously this is not ideal because I'm not going as heavy as I would like to, that um, I'm trying to get my strict press back, okay? And the one video I saw recently was that you actually need to hit shoulders more frequently in order to get the strength out in your shoulders. So that is what I'm doing. So I usually strict press once a week. So now I'm doing strict press once a week and then a dumbbell strict press as well. Um, so today I would in theory be going nice and heavy with my strict press but because of my shoulder I'm not going to go as heavy as possible but I still want that stimulus um, just to start working towards that goal of hopefully increasing my, my strict press number so okay so I've got my dimples okay what you want to do is you want to kick them up one at a time okay so kick one and two Okay, and then control that negative. Pause at the bottom and up. Because I'm not going super heavy, I'm manipulating it a bit to make it harder, okay? And that's what you want to do. Oh. Ah. 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 Okay. No tempo and partial to fail. Oh, if you can't control it back onto your knees, just drop it or have a spotter. Okay. Then we're going to do around the world. Okay. So you're going to take those nice light plates. Okay. Then you go all the way. Okay. You don't need a lot of weight for this. Okay. Mm. So, depending on which way you bring it up, will activate different areas of the shoulders. So, if you have your palms down, you'll feel it more in the middle of your delt, okay? If you bring your thumbs up, 
guess what? What do you feel? You feel it more on the front of your delt. And if you bring your pinkies up, you'll immediately feel it more in the rear of your delt. So what you can do is every single set, you can do slightly different angle, okay? Ooh. <sighs> mm. So I'm gonna be doing three sets and I'm gonna do each one as slightly differently. I'm gonna do the around the worlds with my thumb up for the first set, okay? Nice and controlled, okay, chest out, shoulders down, do not hunch, okay? The second set I'm gonna do with my palms facing down to hit the middle of my shoulders. And the last set, I'm gonna do pinkies up so I hit more of the rear dot of my shoulder. Okay, three sets. Oh. <laughs> and that's how I'm going to smash shoulders. Oh, I'm feeling a pump coming. So we're still getting a pump on. May not be going exactly as planned, but baby, 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 baby. We're making some gains. Yeah, my shoulders are on fire. <laughs> oh, it feels good, baby. It feels good. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to do three sets, as I said. So remember, so it's so simple. Okay, and so effective by just changing the angle, okay, whether you have your thumb up, your palm down, or your pinky up, will engage. Let's, let me actually show you what I'm talking about, okay? So look, thumb, you can see immediately how the front of my shoulder is more engaged. Change to palm up, and you can see that more the middle of the shoulder is engaged. And you do that, and there you go. Guess what? It's more of the rear delt is start to be engaged, okay? And it's so simple, okay? Just by doing that, you're engaging different elements of the shoulder. And as I say, keep your chest up. You want to be nice and prim and proper the entire way through because that's how you maximize the activation of the shoulder, okay? And that's one thing that I see a lot. It's very common. People start going like that. They go too heavy and then they're trying to manipulate their body and, you know, you see them kind of like wiggle their way up or they're jumping and they're using their body momentum and then suddenly all they're working are their traps. So, chest out, shoulders back and nice controlled movements, okay? That's how we make some gains. Yeah, you see those shoulders? Yeah, getting pumped. Yeah, baby.